clock ticking toward a December deadline, supporters of Medicaid expansion prepare to take the issue to the ballot. If need be, there will be a robust and well-funded campaign to ensure its passage. Supporters complain that Republican legislative leadership has not allowed a vote. Some of the lawmakers in this state have been bullied into believing that if they vote for Medicaid expansion, they'll never win another election. But critics counter that Medicaid is just too expensive. Expanding Medicaid uh, to follow Obamacare is going to cost Ohio billions of dollars. The prospects of a statewide vote on Medicaid expansion, John Allison from Healthy Ohioans Work is our newsmaker. It's not just Medicaid. Now the future of Internet cafes in Ohio could be in the voters' hands. That we are a legitimate establishment and that we offer a good, clean environment. What is the future of sweepstakes parlors? and a farewell to a governor. Dad's work in office changed his city, changed his country, and changed this state forever. Ohio says goodbye to John Gilligan. It's all coming up on Capitol Square. Hi everybody, welcome to Capitol Square. I'm Jim Heath. And I'm Tracy Townsend. Well, you know what? The saga of Medicaid expansion mm -hmm. in Ohio continues. Supporters are now pressing for a statewide vote. And this, the same week that Michigan lawmakers approved it, and the Republican governor there says he will sign it. Advocates for Medicaid expansion announced this week that they will push to get a statewide vote next year if lawmakers fail to pass it by December 31st. To me, and I'm not a math major, but to me it's a no-brainer. Money from the government, total payment for three years, and then a 90-10 payment to help the people of this state get well. What's, what's the difficulty other than a, some legislators believe that a vote for this is, an, a, is a vote for the Affordable Care Act, and for some reason that's forbidden. Last week, the Conservative Heritage Foundation brought its defund Obamacare bus rally to Columbus. Hundreds showed up to voice their displeasure with the brand new health care law. I sat down with Heritage President, uh, former Senator Jim DeMint, and asked him about Medicaid expansion in Ohio. The promise of the federal money is what I call fool's gold. Uh, it's going to be there for a few years, but over the next 10 years, Expanding Medicaid uh, to follow Obamacare is going to cost Ohio billions of dollars. And, and I know the governor's heart's in the right place. I know Governor Kasich, he's a wonderful person. But government compassion doesn't work. And promising people you're going to give them health care when all you're giving them a plan uh, is a plan that doctors won't take is not the best way to get people insured. To respond to Jim DeMint and critics of Medicaid expansion, we welcome John Allison from Healthy Ohioans Work. He's leading the effort to place the issue on the ballot. John, good morning. Good morning. All right, so we've heard the message from Jim DeMint. Uh, it reflects uh, a lot of the conservative theme that we've heard this entire year. We've done sort of a preliminary head count uh, at the legislature, and a majority of Republicans seem to be with him. Uh, and now we're hearing that they are likely to have some reforms, mm -hmm. but not the expansion that the federal government is looking towards. So, I, I mean, is that a, your assessment? Is that where we're at? Well, I'll be very clear that uh, from our perspective, uh, Healthy Ohioans Work will be a campaign that uh, has a broad and diverse group of supporters from the business community, healthcare providers, labor organizations, faith leaders. We have not given up on the legislature. We know that this is a difficult issue. We know that there are political considerations. We know that there are deep felt uh, philosophical considerations at play here. But obviously you've looked at the calendar, you've looked at the clock, and you've, looked, you've done your own head count, and that's led you to begin this process. It has, it has. But we also believe that there is a bipartisan solution here for, that, will, that will result in the authorization of Medicaid expansion. So let me ask you, you talked about the diverse coalition. What is it about all of this that you think GOP lawmakers aren't getting that I mean you've brought together I mean the Chamber of Commerce sure along with progressive groups right. I mean you don't see that very often yeah. now it's uh, true uh, I'll tell you what uh, what we've seen having spent months and months talking with members of both sides of the aisle about this issue uh, on the Republican side there is sincere concern about uh, how the federal government is funded or not funded about whether or not 
uh, Medicaid expansion and the, and the promise of payments by the federal government um, can be counted on uh, for, uh, for uh, the length of period that they have been promised. You hear that, you hear, uh, you know, there's practical consideration that since the Affordable Care Act was passed a few years ago, we've had a couple of election cycles where, um, not to a person, but in, in, in a, to a great extent, you've had many Republicans who have run successfully in elections beating up on Obamacare. And it seems like that is the real, that's sort of the bottom line, I think, right here, is that attachment to Obamacare. Governor Kasich, other Republican governors, Michigan this week, Rick right. Snyder there, Jan Brewer out in Arizona have tried to make the case that this is separate, but you heard Jim DeMint and you hear a lot of conservatives say this is just an extension of Obamacare. They're looking at polls showing that that law is still relatively unpopular. Sure, and we've certainly seen polls in this state that show that, that voters can distinguish between Obamacare and Medicaid expansion and, and support Medicaid expansion in a winning way. Uh, it's a frustration, I mean clearly uh, Medicaid expansion is part of the Affordable Care Act, part of the bill that is generally known as, as Obamacare. I think I've seen, and certainly Ohio voters back in 2011, amended the state constitution to deal with the individual mandate element of, of the Affordable Care Act. Well, Medicaid expansion is, is in that, was in that legislation, but it's not the same thing. It's distinguishable. And that'll be incumbent upon us to help legislators and perhaps in 2014 voters understand that this is different. So uh, let's talk about your message. I mean, how many signatures do you need for this to be on the ballot? Well, this is a, this is an initiated statute, which is a little different process under the Ohio Constitution. And uh, we submitted to the Attorney General this week a summary of the law and the law and the and the proposed statute. And uh, assuming that that gets certified, we have a requirement to file a little over 115,000 signatures uh, in late December of this year. That, if we if we meet that burden. Then the issue comes before the General Assembly early next year. So the other burden, so to speak, is really getting the message out, your message out that, you know, just as we talked about, this is separate from Obamacare, that sort of thing. So where do you, how do you start that? Well, I mean, I, I think uh, we have, I think we have tried to do that. Certainly our audience has been the General Assembly mm -hmm. and our audience continues to be the General Assembly because our highest priority is to get is to convince them to get this across the line in 2013. If we don't do that, 100% uh, federal funding for, for expansion starts on 1-1-14. We don't want to wait until November of 14 because we're going to lose an entire year of 100% federal funding. We're going to lose an entire year of being able to help more than 275,000 Ohioans have a chance of improving their lives. So basically one of the three years for free from the federal government would be lost if this moves to November 14. And another thing I'd point out on your petition drive that I, I thought was interesting is that I think you got around 6,000 signatures, 5,800 signatures in four days, well above what you need. So the likelihood here is that that is gonna be certified and we are gonna move to this next step. What are the signals that you're looking for, John, in the next 14 days from the legislature that they are actually gonna get busy this fall and give you something that satisfies you to pull back from this vote. Well, Jim, I'm not sure in the in the next 14 days we're going to get any any signal. And the legislature is coming back from summer recess. They have a kind of a they have a kind of a gradually uh, more more uh, more in depth schedule. And I'm not sure in the next 14 days we're going to get that sign. Have you spoken to the governor uh, about this ballot initiative? We uh, we we gave the governor's staff a uh, heads up before we started circulating petitions. Do you know whether Ed Fitzgerald says that he signed your initial petition? Do we know whether uh, Governor Kasich signed it? I don't. That? I don't know. Well, I, I, I think that um, the linkage here, obviously, that we've been talking about right. between Obamacare and Medicaid expansion is, is going to be the, the key issue. If the legislators come up with reforms that don't trigger the expansion, that won't be satisfactory um, to you and your group. I think that's fair to say. Then the ballot initiative uh, for next November, if it's the only thing on the ballot, as we look at the politics of this, who does that benefit? One might suggest that if Medicaid expansion is on a November 14 ballot, that the Kasich campaign could be a little nervous about that. I think the conventional wisdom around Capitol Square is that this would help Democratic turnout. But um, to assume that this will be the only issue on the ballot, mm -hmm. I, 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 I get your question, but we could have marriage, marijuana, right to work, uh, I guess internet, cafe, referendum. Mm -hmm. Uh, all kinds of all stuff. Kinds we could we could be the uh, we, we could be a non-issue in in the uh, turnout uh, calculation. 
So wanted to also ask you, we know that you worked for Governor Taft. I mean, is there something that Governor Kasich could do to just bypass the legislature altogether and just get the expansion into place? Executive well, order of some sort? Well, there, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there, are, there is some chatter around, around, um, around Capitol Square about trying to, to, to go a different route or to use the controlling board to approve this as opposed to doing it through a bill. Um, look, the legislature has a part to play in this. Uh, you need to have an appropriation. The legislature has that authority. They will always have a part to play in this. But uh, we're, we're out of time. But so there might be. <laughs> I didn't hear a well, definitive no, like, no. from your experience no. with the governor's office. I didn't hear a definitive. I think no. there are options, but the, all of those options include mm -hmm. the legislature. Gotcha. John okay. Allison, always good to see you, and I have a feeling uh, we might be seeing see you a lot in next year. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ohio said farewell this week to former Governor Jack Gilligan. Governor Gilligan served one term in the early 1970s, and he will be remembered for enacting Ohio's personal income tax and creating the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. His daughter, also well-known, Kathleen Sebelius, is the current Health and Human Services Director. Gilligan was remembered by friends and colleagues at the State House this week, and we send our thoughts to his family.